found him. Things are still in a bit of a muddle, I'm afraid. We've had to store a lot of stuff. Is Sir Frank expecting you? Commander Gould, I have an appointment. Have a seat. I won't be a moment. wound no more than five turns every day. Uh, let that be the task of one man only. Mr. Graham, the work will be my own, I assure you. No one else shall touch it. Your ladyship is most gracious. Mr. Graham, do you wish to make a purchase, sir? Uh, no, sir. Well, then please uh, make your application to the door at the rear of the premises. I've been sent by Dr. Edmund Alley, sir. Mm, you better come in. Don't touch anything. Please. One second a month, sir. You're either a liar or a fool. Who are you makers? Myself and my brother James. Really? Who are you apprenticed to? My father. I'm a carpenter by profession, as was he. A carpenter? My timekeepers are made of wood. I brought some drawings with me. I'm sorry I mistook you. This is a joke, sir. Am I right? Mr. Halley seeks to derive some pleasure from this contrivance. Is he here perhaps hiding in a corner to watch my performance? As I am sorry, sir. The fault is mine. It was my impression. I was here to see a clockmaker. I found myself in a toy shop by mistake. William! Mr. Harrison. Summer and winter. How is it done? How is it done? The compensation. I use a pendulum of different metals that work against each other. Impossible. Doesn't work. I've tried it. It is possible. It does work. I've built it. Commander Gould, I have read your letter several times, in fact, and nowhere in it can I find any reference to any qualification for the work that you propose. Well, I'm a trained navigator, and I'm working on a history of the chronometer. I am referring to formal qualifications, Commander. The Harrison clocks are possibly the most valuable and certainly the most important timekeepers that we possess. Yes, I am aware that they have been neglected. And I suppose I must be grateful to you for pointing that out to us. However, there has been a war on. It is taking us a little time to sort ourselves out. Now, I believe that you are no longer on active service, Commander? No, sir, I'm retired. Yes, Admiral Douglas's office. It must be a quiet life, just staring at maps after your service on the China Seas. I had what is popularly known as a nervous breakdown. Quite. Sir Frank, I'm not asking to mechanically alter the Harrison machines. I just want to bring them back to their proper condition. If they're left as they are much longer, I fear they may become unrecoverable. I know my qualifications appear unlikely. I can only plead that they're no more so than Harrison's own. And I promise I won't fall to the floor and foam at the mouth. It was not my intention to make light of your condition. Nor mine. What about the Admiral? Has he agreed to this? Not exactly. I'd have to do it in my own time. Evenings, weekends, that sort of thing. There can be no question of payment. I seek none. I want to create a clock without a pendulum. I brought detailed drawings of my ideas, which I want to submit to the Board of Longitude. Mm. The Board is looking for a solution. I want reward a theory. Besides, not a mechanic among them. They're astronomers all. As far as they're concerned, the answer is in the heavens. Uh, may I? I'm a clockmaker, not a thief. Let me see your papers.
You needn't be afraid. I'm no carpenter. <laughs> <laughs> You may. Thank you. William! You got the money! You won the prize. <laughs> We've won no prize, but we will. Mr. George Graham's given us 200 pounds. I'm to build my marine timepiece. It is just under 200 years since John Harrison returned to Barrow with the money to start construction of his marine clock, which I shall call Harrison One. No. Graham's money was not enough to feed his family and pay for tools and materials, so he was forced to continue with his work as a carpenter alongside construction of the marine timepiece. Mark that. Thus, alone, without advice or assistance, Harrison set out to tackle a problem that had defeated every other craftsman on Earth. His solution to the pendulum problem was a new kind of mechanism that was not affected by exterior movement. Two balances that could compensate for any angle at which the clock was held. He also incorporated into the structure the temperature compensation techniques that he'd used on his wooden clocks. And he then began a rigorous program of comparison between the sea clock and his original regulating clock. Keep it steady, will you? It's too close to the fire. That's nonsense. Now we have two enemies, the climate and the inclination of the oceans. We must be sure, as the piece is heated, be it by the Jamaican sun or by the fire, that the movement doesn't change. Is it cold enough in here? Yes. Uh, oh, that's good. Yes. Now, the rule set by the pendulum allows us to fix the motion to one twentieth of a second. Louder, James! Well, William. Four seconds. Four. So the sea clock is losing a second an hour to the pendulum clock. Now let's keep making adjustments, make it perfect. Each adjustment of the new machine required that it be fully dismantled, which is an extremely demanding task. I am now able to achieve this in a little under eight hours, with the same time to be allowed again for reassembly. I have already had to do this four times. Harrison, when he was adjusting the clock, must have done it hundreds of times. Steady now. That's good. Keep it even. Steady now. D9. Start your count. Carefully now. 51. 52. 52. 53. 54. 55. 56. 57. 58. 59, 60. Stop, stop, for God's sake, stop. Well, it's not constant. Well, it was still I could get under a second an hour. Now it's two seconds. That's 48 seconds a day. It's 48 seconds, so very much. On a seven week voyage to the West Indies, that's over half an hour which would mean an error of nearly 500 miles. We can't afford to lose more than a second a week. Is it possible for a machine to be so accurate? John believes it is. There it is. Put a stop there. Keeps the lever from falling too far back. Commander? Good God, man, what are you doing here? I thought I was on my own. I'm going crazy! Oh. No, don't worry, not. That kind of crazy. It's this machine. There's not a straight line in it. 